occipital bone. Introduction The occipital bone is an unpaired bone that is situated at the postero-inferior part of the cranium. It is pierced by a large oval aperture, the foramen magnum, through which the cranial cavity communicates with the vertebral canal. The occipital bone is divided into three parts. The curved, expanded plate behind the foramen magnum is called the squama. The thick, quadrilateral piece in front of the foramen is called the basilar part, whilst on either side of the foramen is the lateral part. Angles The superior angle of the occipital bone articulates with the parietal bones. In the fetal skull, it corresponds in position with the posterior fontanelle. The inferior angle is fused with the body of the sphenoid. The lateral angles are situated at the extremities of the transverse grooves. Borders The superior borders extend from the superior to the lateral angles. They articulate with the parietal bones to form the lambdoid suture. The inferior borders extend from the lateral angles to the inferior angle. Their upper halves articulate with the mastoid portion of the temporal, the lower half with the petrous part of the temporal bone. Squama external The external surface of squama is convex. It presents the external occipital protuberance, which is a prominence, lying midway between the superior angle of the bone and the foramen magnum. Extending laterally from this prominence on either side are two curved lines, one a little above the other. The upper one is named the highest nuchal line. The lower one is termed the superior nuchal line. That part of the squama which lies above the highest nuchal lines is named the planum occipitale, and that below is termed the planum nucale. The external occipital crest extends from the external occipital protuberance to the foramen magnum. Extending laterally from the middle of this crest on either side is the inferior nuchal line. Squama internal The internal surface is deeply concave and divided into four fossae by a cruciate eminence. The upper two fossae are triangular and lodge the occipital lobes of the cerebrum. The lower two are quadrilateral and accommodate the hemispheres of the cerebellum. At the point of intersection of the four divisions of the cruciate eminence is the internal occipital protuberance. The upper division runs to the superior angle of the bone and on one side of it, generally the right, lies a deep groove the sagittal sulcus. The lower division of the cruciate eminence is prominent and is named the internal occipital crest. Transverse grooves extend one on either side from the internal occipital protuberance to the lateral angles of the bone. Lateral parts. The lateral parts are situated at the sides of the foramen magnum. On their undersurfaces are the oval or reniform condyles, which articulate with the superior facets of the atlas. At the base of either condyle, the bone is pierced by a short canal, the hypoglossal canal. This begins immediately above the foramen magnum, is directed forward and laterally, and gives exit to the hypoglossal nerve. Behind either condyle is a depression, the condylar fossa, which is sometimes perforated by the condylar canal. Extending laterally from the posterior half of the condyle is a quadrilateral plate of bone, the jugular process. It is excavated in front by the jugular notch, which, in the articulated skull, forms the posterior part of the jugular foramen. The upper surface of the lateral part presents an oval eminence, the jugular tubercle, which overlies the hypoglossal canal. Basilar part The basilar part extends forward and upward from the foramen magnum. It presents in front a quadrilateral area which is joined to the body of the sphenoid. 
The lower surface presents the pharyngeal tubercle, about one centimeter in front of the foramen magnum. The upper surface presents a broad, shallow groove, which supports the medulla oblongata. Thank you.